Jan covered it in 2024, Bernard in 2025, and now it's my turn to cover the topic in 2026. In this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put forward my personal perspective on how to learn Shopify development as someone who's been developing in the Shopify ecosystem for more than six years now. One of the three areas we'll talk about in this video I've already mastered, one I probably won't bother with, and the third one is one I'm actively learning in 2026, so I can share with you my own learning plan for how I'm going to go about it. So without further do here are the three areas headless storefront development often just referred to as headless development theme development and app development. All right, so let's talk about headless storefront development first. The best way to explain headless storefront development is that basically when it comes to building an online storefront for your Shopify store, it's usually done through a theme on the online store sales channel. So that's what we're gonna cover in the next category. But before we get to that, headless storefront development is a pretty niche area of Shopify development where you build the front end on another tech stack and then you connect to the data within your Shopify store on the back end. Okay, so when it comes to headless storefront development, I've already shared my thoughts on this channel. You can head to my YouTube channel, just search for Hydrogen. And the title of the video is called Learning Shopify Hydrogen, Why I'd Stick With Themes. Basically to summarize that video, what I talk about in that video is why I learned a little bit of hydrogen and then I quit because basically I've never been approached by anyone that needed a hydrogen storefront. Hydrogen, for those that don't know, is Shopify's own headless framework that is completely optional when building a headless storefront. And that is the thing with headless is that you don't have to use hydrogen, you can use another framework, for example, Gatsby. So I found this really good Shopify storefront. Well, it's Shopify on the back end, but the storefront is headless and it's built with Gatsby. So Gatsby is another popular JavaScript framework. And if we click around here, we can start to see some really interactive features. So if I go to, let's say a product page here, and um, I'm trying to find some really nice interactive features here. Let's see, customize to order. Yeah, you can see that it's a bit more advanced than your average Shopify website. And it's essentially a front end app that connects to the Shopify store. And if I go to my cart and I take that cart to the checkout, that is where we should start to see Shopify. So yeah, here you can see the familiar Shopify checkout. Everything before this checkout page right here is a headless storefront. It's not built using a theme on Shopify's own online store sales channel. So Shopify give you that opportunity to build a storefront completely off of Shopify. And that allows you to build with your own tech stack. Okay, another example is something we covered on the channel as well, storefront web components. So I'll just search that here, storefront web components. So if you wanna know more about them, I've got a video on that as well. Essentially, if we go to the page on storefront web components, they let you bring Shopify powered commerce capabilities to any website. So it's just an easy way to do headless. So if we take a look at this playground right here, you can see that I don't need a full JavaScript framework to create a custom web app. What I can do is just integrate these components onto any web page to get a headless shopping experience that still pulls information from the Shopify backend. And then finally, a honorable mention goes out to Lovable here. I talked about the new Lovable integration. Maybe you saw this come out in 2025 as well, but Shopify launched this Lovable integration. And when I saw it, I freaked out. I was like, oh my God, you can now just like vibe code a whole Shopify theme. But no, it's actually a headless system. And if you want, you can go to LinkedIn. I'll leave a link to this post in the description of this video and you can see my take on it. So basically, Basically, I test out the tool. If we skip ahead, it creates this sort of bare bones theme, but the theme is basically just a redirect to Lovable. And so you're basically just creating a headless app on Lovable, which connects to Shopify on the back end. So if you like making Lovable sites, you like vibe coding, you don't want to have to figure out how to do theme development, maybe this is a good option for you. Okay, but basically all of these, what they have in common is the storefront API. The storefront API is the way apps, websites, and games Eva access public facing information like products, collections, and the functionality to build a cart. As it mentions here, Hydrogen is Shopify's official React-based framework for building headless commerce at global scale. So all of these options are going to be based on the same storefront API, 
But as I mentioned in that video that I mentioned earlier, it's a super niche area of web development. Most sellers are using the online store sales channel and they're using themes. So let's move on to theme development. Now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know what I'm gonna suggest. Just take my course if you wanna know Shopify theme development. I mean, it's the website I created specifically so that I could teach you from A to Z what you need to know for Shopify theme development. There are some free courses that you can access if you just head to the website, shopifythemedeveloper.com, and you can click here to sign up for a free mini course. You just choose your starting point here, whether you're a complete beginner with web development or or you're already a web developer, but you just want to learn the Shopify specific skills, I have a free course on each of those, okay? So that is an option to gain some information for free. You can also, on my YouTube channel, access some free resources that I've created. So you can go to, actually, I created these as the first videos ever on the channel. So you can filter videos by oldest here, and you can see I made a Shopify theme development series. You might think because this is six years old that this is out of date, but for the most part, I built this series on core principles. So those core principles haven't gone out of date yet. So we talk about what is a theme, the difference between store and theme data, how theme development actually works and the staging and workflow involved in Shopify theme development. Then I go into my Shopify liquid crash course. This I believe is the most watched video on the channel. I think I was the first person to ever cover Shopify liquid on YouTube. And I watched that video back a while ago when I was creating the Shopify liquid module for shopifythemedeveloper.com and it actually is still not out of date. Shopify liquid doesn't change that much and if you're looking for changes since I made that video, I actually covered it in a video somewhere here where I've, oh, I've filtered by popular. I'm looking for filtered by latest. I actually created a video on nine things that have changed with liquid since I made that video, but it was all just a bunch of little things. Most of the Shopify liquid language has stayed the same throughout the years. So you can still use that crash course on the YouTube channel if you don't want to take the course on shopifythemedeveloper.com. And then a video that people are really enjoying is my four hour long build a Shopify theme from scratch video. So you can watch that to gain an idea of how Shopify themes are made. And also the old Skillshare channel. People are still asking me, well, you've got classes on Shopify theme development on Skillshare.com. What's the difference between these classes right here and the ones on Shopify theme developer.com? Well, these were created many years in the past. A lot of the content might still be relevant, but I have moved on and I've really put my efforts into this learning platform for those people that really want to learn Shopify theme development properly. Okay. So like I mentioned, you can start with a free course on the homepage, but if you don't have any budget to spend on courses, as mentioned, there are a bunch of free resources on my YouTube channel. And I believe with Skillshare, if you're new to the platform, you can get a free trial to that website as well. Okay. So that's the summary on Shopify theme development. And now for the exciting world of Shopify app development. So many of you guys have been asking me about Shopify app development. It hasn't really been my focus focus up until now because I have enjoyed the freedom that Shopify theme development allows. It is a skill that you can learn pretty quickly and then go off and deliver services to clients on Shopify. And that essentially allows me to have a remote income that allows me to live wherever I want in the world. Currently, I'm recording this from Bali. So that's why I liked Shopify theme development so much. But now I have bigger goals and I'm looking to create an app in 2026 or a portfolio of apps. And the reason why there's two arrows here is because there's an interesting area of Shopify app development, which is extensions and extension only apps. So this is a development that's happened in the last few years is that a lot of things are moving into extensions. So I'm going to click on this cool diagram here that I found on Shopify Academy. If you want to, I'd recommend you can go to shopifyacademy.com and you can go to the app surfaces example course. That is where I pulled this image from, but you can see here that extensions allow us to extend certain parts of the Shopify experience, okay? And you can see here which ones are Shopify Plus exclusive. So unfortunately, checkout UI extensions and functions are exclusive to Plus, so we can't develop them 
on stores that are less than plus, but we can do stuff like build post-purchase UI extensions and customer accounts extensions on Shopify stores of any plan. So that's pretty cool. Some of these don't make sense as extension only apps, but some of these you can build without an embedded web app and you can deliver some useful functionality to stores and admins using extensions, okay? So going back to the diagram, how I would recommend learning this, well, stay tuned to the channel because I am planning a bit of content on extension development. So that's the first thing, subscribe to this channel if you want videos on this subject. But how I've been learning it is I've literally just been vibe coding it and then recreating it myself in order to actually gain more of a deeper understanding. It's crazy what you can do with AI these days. You can just tell AI, let's say for instance, you're building a discount function or you wanna build a specific UI. Those are two examples that I'm hoping to cover soon on this channel. Well, then you can just use natural language within Cursor or GitHub Copilot within Visual Studio Code. You just type in what you're looking for. And as long as you connect to the Shopify MCP server, you should be good to go. In my experience, it does an amazing job. But then after I generate this app, I go back and I build the same thing myself, making sure I actually understand the code, not just shipping code that was generated by AI. Okay, so that's how I would recommend you learn extension only development. But then you have the other side here, which is the full on proper apps. Okay, so my thoughts on these, like I mentioned before, I've liked theme development in the past because it's an easy skill to get into something like freelancing where you offer services. You can be of value to a store straight away with Shopify theme development skills. With building proper web apps, you're probably looking to build an app for the Shopify app store. And what that means is you need to create a business essentially and you need to build something that can be marketed to a range of stores and compete with all the other apps on the app store not necessarily a bad thing you can make a, a lot of money and it could be a very scalable business doing an app but just not something i had focused on until now in 2026 so my thoughts on learning proper web apps i think a good place to start is the app development fundamentals course on Shopify Academy. This is not gonna really teach you practical skills. You can think of this like a mini university course. It's quite theoretical, but if you're new to app development, I definitely recommend you just take some time. It won't take you that long. I think I did it in less than an hour and it's gonna quiz you make sure you understand the concepts, and then you can move on to following the text-based tutorial on Shopify's own documentation. So as you can see here, you can click start building now and you can start scaffolding an app. By the way, I'm gonna leave all the links in the description of this video or somewhere easy for you to access. So you have access to all these things I'm talking about in this video. And then the other thing with app development is it's a whole new set of skills. It's not just basic front-end web development that you can apply to any website like HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Obviously those things are part of it, but you need to learn skills like React, Prisma, GraphQL, which is the query language that's used for the APIs in Shopify, TypeScript. There's a lot more things to understand and it's a little bit more complicated. How I recommend getting past this is something I've been doing myself, is simply asking Claude or another AI model, if you prefer, within Cursor or within Visual Studio Code. And in my experience, if you ask the right questions, you get amazing answers back from the AI and the AI essentially guides you through the process and teaches you how to code. Coming from someone who learned to code 10 years ago and basically had to piece together different tutorials and read random documentation, this is incredible that we now have AI to teach us how to code, okay? Now, the other thing with app development that you kind of need to know in order to come up with projects, at least to learn this stuff, is deciding what app to build. And one person I've found that advises on this is Matt D'Souza. He has this course here that I will also link below called The Blueprint. I bought this and I completed this blueprint. It talks about the actual business of a Shopify app from someone who's actually done it. So I took this course, I got some good information, but actually one of the things that that stood out to me that he recommends wasn't in the blueprint, but in an interview he did with Jan. Some of you guys would know Jan here on YouTube. He's also a Shopify developer. And what he mentioned in that interview is that there's opportunities with Shopify app development because there's constantly new features being built. So one of the ideas I got from that podcast 
podcast with Jan was to look at the new Shopify features that are currently on developer preview and maybe you can get a head start on your competition, learn how to build something and then when it gets taken out of developer preview, maybe you have an advantage. This is basically stuff that I've come up with that you can just steal my ideas. But of course, I did get the initial idea from someone who's actually done this before, Matt D'Souza. Another thing you could do is look at what apps on the App Store are doing well from like a financial sort of downloads, installs perspective. And if you can do it better than them, there's your opportunity. But that might be a bit tough to compete with the big dogs in the space. So maybe there's another way you can find a problem to solve on Shopify. And if you have existing clients, like in my case, working with Shopify clients doing the front end stuff, maybe you find a problem from direct experience. Maybe it's your own store that you wish an app existed for that one thing. Then you can get app ideas from that. And if you do have any app ideas and you want me to code them on this channel, I mean, I might go steal them and build the app myself, but at least I will have something on this channel to demonstrate. So I'm interested in your ideas, not just from a business perspective, but from a learning perspective. And I can share how to build those ideas with you guys as well. So that's the summary the three areas of Shopify development. Quick shout out to Agentic Commerce, which is something that Shopify have talked about in the latest editions that came out last month. That might be a whole new area of Shopify development in future, but it's such in its infancy now that I didn't think it was worth talking about. Just an honorable mention at the end of this video. All right, so those are your three areas of Shopify development. Like I mentioned, each has its own tech stack and business model. I might actually go into the business model of each more in depth in a future video if you guys are interested. But basically, theme development is a good lower barrier to entry skill to get into for freelancing. App development is the best for those who are looking to build and market their own software. And headless is a very niche skill that can help only a small amount of stores. What I'd recommend for you guys is that you choose one of these areas to learn first and gain proficiency at that, and then move on to one or more of the other two if you're interested in taking your learning further. And of course, if you're looking to learn Shopify development, check out shopifythemedeveloper.com, which has been set up as my one-stop shop for learning Shopify theme development in 2026 and beyond. Happy coding, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.